What is going on boys and girls of YouTube? So today we're knocking out our top five supports. We do have a patch hitting next week on Tuesday, but support builds really shouldn't be altered at all from that. The only thing really I think that'll change are mage builds, but you know, we'll get into that once it once pros are playing and we can see these builds in action. We'll update the mages. That'll all be done on Smite Source right away. Smite Source is almost fully updated. There's um, a couple classes that need to be run through, but we're getting there almost done. So that's that. And today we're just gonna talk about the sports. Now, one thing I wanna note with these sports. We're just going to jump right into it. All the Guardians are basically good and playable as supports. Yorm, Ardeo, and Cthulhu would be the three I would say don't really play as support at all. Specifically Yorm, probably the worst out of all of them. But everyone else is good and can be played. And it's not really strange or you're not going to be at a crazy disadvantage. You might not be playing the best Guardians, but they all can be played. So understand that. <laughs> just understand that before we get into it. So we're going to talk about these top five. At the number two slot, I do have two gods. So be prepared for that just ahead of time. But anyway, let's get into it. Fafnir, number five on the list. Why Fafnir, number five on the list? Because Fafnir is nuts. You have three to like three and a half second lockdown between your one and your three in your ult stance. You have another stun outside of your ult stance. You have a massive team-wide buff. He is the best objective doing support in the game. So objective doing, meaning anytime your team is pulling a fire, a gold, pushing a phoenix, a tower, he is the best. Because he can simply buff his team, buff his hunter, buff whoever, jump in, throw a stun out, ultimate, create all that space, then turn around and buff his team again, his whole team this time, and the objective is dead. In that, you know, nine second window, the objective is gone. On top of that, like we mentioned, a three and a half second lockdown, basically. I think it's actually like after the DR, it's something like a little less than three seconds, but around a three second lockdown, when in the old stance. A disarm when not in the alt sense. You've got the stun lock on the one when not in the alt sense. You have a very good engage. On top of that, your laning phase is pretty strong because you have self sustain. Your two heals you. You have the buff to your own hunter. You have the disarm on their hunter to stop them from autoing for a few seconds, which is going to be very important in controlling your lane, especially early. And then you've got the stun, which can be used to clear, it can be used to interrupt channels from like a Bacchus belch, all those things really create a lot of pressure when you're using them simultaneously in the lane or in the team fights wherever you are that's why fafnir is killing it we're also in a late game meta the games usually end at 30 minutes everyone gets full build enhanced fire is done then somebody wins fafnir buffs everyone insanely off of his two if you've never, you know, really noticed how much that two is giving you 30% attack speed you've got the bonus damage which is 20% it's nuts and it's healing yourself. That on anyone who's full build is unreal. Like that buff just throwing onto a full team on full build is unreal. And it's going to be really unmatched at that stage. There's, there's nothing like it in the game. So that's why Fafnir is in our top five. That is what is really, you know, kind of killing it for him. Now builds. There's really two core starters still. Sentinels and Benevolence. They keep buffing, trying to mess around with War Flag. It's not being built. Nobody's building War Flag. Sentinels and Benevolence just got gold buffs to how much gold they're giving um, per kill. I, 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 Tyrus is trying to offset everything. It is what it is. So, Sentinels and Benevolence. Sentinels tankier off the rip. Benevolence less tanky, but more sustain off the rip. So, a little bit more healing. In reality, someone like Fafnir, who is super just tanky, high mobility, really hard to kill in general, has that long immunity frame. Benevolence is something that would work out for you really really well not much of a downside to it and then sentinels is just kind of your pure consistent support starter neither of these is bad neither of these is wrong just just straight up is wrong if you're building a lot of healing benevolence might kind of offset itself because then you're just getting healing on top of healing on top of healing um sentinels is always going to be a very consistent so if you're unsure or you just want to make sure you're tankier sentinels is the one i'm going to recommend you to go <clears throat> because you're tankier if you mess up in lane, you're out of position, you're less likely to die because you're, you have more defense. You, you are just you are a tankier god right off the rip with the double uh, 10 protections. Benevolence giving you no protections. Just, just realize that. Please. <laughs> Please realize that. Uh, like I said, there's no wrong. There's no bad. That just is what it is. Uh, on top of that, when you're upgrading, you're going Sentinel's Boon. Um, Sentinel's Embrace is very, very good. The aura sharing at that stage is kind of on the weaker end. You're also making yourself less tanky. And in my opinion, just the Sentinel's Boon sustain 
allows for you to, to do a lot more in your cows and ranking. Neither of these is wrong again. If you really do just want that extra protection to split, go for it. But when you're in that team fight, that 80 protections is dwindled down pretty low. It's not bad. It's still like, what is it, uh, 10 or 20 to each of your teammates, which is, it is really good. But also having your own sustain, your own tankiness, your own survivability is very important. I like getting the Sentinel's Boon because now it's field level 15. So you get online earlier. So when you are pushing uh, waves down, pushing in towers, whatever you're doing, you're team fighting around in a way in a lane, you're getting a lot of healing, a lot of healing off of that passive. The 4% health restore on the assists um, whenever an enemy dies is nice. It is very, very, very nice. So that's why I like the Sentinel's Boon for that earliness. Once again, your choice either way, completely up to you. In my opinion and from my experience and from what I've seen, there's no downside or bad side or wrong or right in, in that, those situations. It's just kind of preference for you. Try them both out. Um, but note what you're gaining and what you're losing when you're doing that. So next, next item in the build. This is pretty much core and the same for all the supports that don't have healing, like actual healing. Uh, so like, you know, if you're playing Guan healing or Afro, like true healers, right? So Gauntlet of Thieves is still super meta. Very, very, very strong item. Pretty much unmatched um, overall. If you're playing a guy that doesn't need a lot of CDR, you're going to notice how tanky this build really makes you. It kind of lets you just W key at people and they can't really do much about it. Now outside, if you don't want to go Gauntlet of Thieves, the alternative item has been, oops, do, 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 has been Mail of Renewal. They changed it. They buffed it. It's so much better. It has a lot of sustain in the item. And building it first is going to give you that sustain. You're a little bit less tanky. You're still pretty tanky. You have 30 protections. You don't have an aura. So you're, the aura is your healing. That, that's really where you make up. You have less defense for your teammates, but you have healing for your teammates. So Mail of Renewal is the alternative that you can go in that slot. And then right now you're going to the Mana Court Spike. Super cheap. Very good item. Very just strongly statted. It's it's kind of filthy. How much you're really getting from the item at that stage in the game. It almost makes no sense. Now for Fafnir, you're not really looking to stack a ton of cooldown or do anything over the top. Uh, like with a full CDR build. You're not spamming your abilities in that sense. Your presence is more of your your key what what makes you do what you need to do so we got our two items online our mana core spike a gauntlet of thebes you can go straight into the aura pushing which is gonna be your emperor's armor really strong item gonna be very very good for tower pushing really just blends in with your kit right your kit is to jump in buff your teammates pop that ultimate get some space and then stand on the tower stand to be the dive be the person in their face you are going to peel occasionally but it's a lot more often that you'll be the jump in initiation and then you'll look to decide what you're doing with your stunts so at this stage you can see how tanky you really are you're talking about 240 physical protections 142 magical so you can look to stack a little bit of magic defense if you need to if you need anti-healing in your kit, if they have any amount of healing, Pestilence is good to grab here. I know a lot of people are going like Contagion, the physical, but realistically, you're looking to, to fill the magical void here, right? So you're trying to get that magical defense up. And then we're going to look to go into our... Doo -doo 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 -doo, if I can find it. I'm blind. We'll go here. Our Mantle of Discord. Most expensive item in the build and almost all the support builds. But it is so strong. It's putting you up near 300 protections. Um, this is without the gauntlet. Aura being given off. So you're in a very tanky state. 4K HP. Pretty much unstoppable. Biggest thing is you're only sitting on 10% CDR with this build. If you want to look for alternative cooldown, if you don't need anti-heal, swap this out. Go ahead and go into your spirit robe. This will be good for whenever you get locked down. It is also to cap out your physical protections. So if you're avoiding magical damage very easily, this and you're still getting autoed and hit by physical gods, this is going to make you as tanky as possible. You do end up losing a little bit of HP. Doesn't matter because you're super tanky. This build will be virtually unstoppable. If you're hitting full build, you're you're <laughs> they're done, right? Like you're gonna be able to do whatever you want. So Fafnir, number five on our list. Number four on our list jumps down into a more simplistic, basic role, right? Geb. Everyone asks me when they're new to support, what should I play? I tell them Geb because Geb is very, very simple in team fights where people get most lost and they're thinking too much and they get overwhelmed geb has the easiest job you throw out a shield you throw your two out you ultimate right you shield the person being hit 
That's easy. Shield my teammate that's being attacked. Ultimate as many people as possible just to try to peel and set up and get my team in to do some damage. And then whoever is running around or whoever we're killing, if I want to lock them down more, I have a two. I have the two knockup. It's a super straightforward kit. A stun, a knockup, a shield for your teammates. That's why I say play kit. Your laning phase is not bad. It's not the best, but it's not bad. You're in a pretty good, pretty safe state because you can just knock up from range. If you're feet, Once you're comfortable, you can roll through the wave to clear. You have that shield for any CC that's coming out, so it kind of stops any aggression from the enemy duo lane. And then your rotations are very good. It's super easy for you to roll out of the lane, get to mid lane, show up, pop an alt, throw a shield, whatever you got to do. Geb is just easy to play, and that is why he's very consistent in casuals and ranked. That's really all there is to it. Build-wise, we're in pretty much the same state. You can go Sentinels or Benevolence. If you want to be super frontline initiation, hyper tanky, that Sentinel's gift, uh, that is what it is. Now, the one thing, when I am playing a hyper support, so I call Geb a hyper support, because your damage is percent based, you're not build doing a lot of damage, you're not consistent damage, you're burst and then shield. This cooldown is going to be very valuable for you. On top of that, having auras and being that true, like I'm going to keep my team alive, God is way more valuable. So for someone like Geb, I would probably go Sentinel's Embrace. I'm not looking to be as tanky because I have the shields. People aren't really going to be killing me. Your passive makes it so if anyone's building crit, they're not hitting you for very much. So you're just a safer God in general. Uh, and then on top of that, I'm going Gauntlet of Thebes. You still have a lot of value out of the Manticore. You do still have a lot of value out of Mill of Renewal, but we do want to get cooldown online as soon as possible without affecting our build, okay? Without building the wrong items. So you're going to want Pridwin, but because of the item stats, a little bit lower on defense, high cooldown, a teeny bit more expensive, not crazy more expensive. We're going to go the Manticore Spikes first. Then we're going to pick up the Pridwin because we want cooldown. You want to get some cooldown online. You need to have cooldown. It's very important for this god to work and, and play properly. Uh, you, there's the one thing is, yes, Geb is tank. I talked about it. Your kit kind of makes you just tankier and more survival anyway, uh, just because of the god's kit. You're a little bit lower on defense. You see, we haven't broke that 200 mark. 200 defense mark, that's fine. It's not the end of the world. You can go double robes here if we want to if they're high cc i'd go spirit robe earlier it's going to get you a little bit more cooldown online um and that tankiness is going to spike you're going to break 200 mark you're almost 200 on both and then if you are farming very well that mantle will fill this gap you'll still be sitting you'll be kind of lower on the hp once again you're playing geb you're not going to be the focus this is a little bit more expensive so if you're not farming well or the game is is a little bit struggle bus shift these items hey you got your 20 percent cdr you're good for now Shift these items. You can look at getting Emperors, or you can look at getting Contagion, or you can look at getting the Pestilence. If you need Anti-Heal, you're going to go the Contagion there, or the Pestilence, whichever, you know, fits your kit. You should be able to recognize, hey, uh, there's a lot of physical damage in this game. There's a lot of magical damage in this game. Which do I need? It's really that simple. If your team is pushing, and you're looking to be grouped up, and you aren't needing Anti-Heal, Emperor's Armor is going to kill it in this slot. Super cheap item. Really good stats. Going to put you way up there. And then finally, you can round out the build with the, with the Spirit Robe or the Mantle. Once again, preference, however the game is going. The mantle is going to keep you alive if you are full committing and they are doing damage back to you. Late game, as a sport, you will start to take damage. So that mantle might be the difference in setting up your team and surviving or you just falling over and dying. Spirit robe, if you are not dying, but you are getting CC'd a little bit and taking a little bit of damage, that's going to be spirit robe is where you're going to want to fill that slot. So once again, preference uh, kind of based on what the game is going. Not big counter building. Don't overthink it. You're not going to go wrong with the build. You're, trust me. If your core is is these three items, you're fine. You're, you're not going to really mess up with your builds too much. Just realize that. Now, if you've noticed, we haven't been building Sav. We haven't been building Heart Ward. We haven't been building Shogun's. Solo laners are building those items right now. If your solo laner is not going it, you can build the Shogun's for your teammates. If you have a bunch of auto attack damage or your teammates are asking for Shogun's, it's okay for you to build it. But your solo lane should easily be fitting in the Sav into most warriors just because of how good of a solo lane item it is. And they should easily be able to build Shoguns if it buffs them or their teammates. So just realize that too. One of the note, because I know people talk about it all the time. So Geb was number four. Number three on our list is Xing Ten, the safest support in the game. Because if you're dying on Xing Ten, it's because you're super messing up. You have the most mobility really out of any support with a double leap. With the knockup for a CC, you counter hunters with your one. If you guys have never taken the time to read what the god does, 
Um, <laughs> whenever you won somebody, your enemies also take, you take... Oh, sorry. I don't know why I'm reading that. Um, it damages enemies, right? You put the dot. It lasts for, I think it's four seconds. And then it reduces their basic attack damage. At max rank, 50% reduction. Okay? Their basic attacks, their autos, are reduced by 50%. So if you're playing Xing Ten, throwing your one at the auto attack gods on the enemy team at all stages of the game will be a difference maker and what you need to do. So this god counters auto attack gods. The knockup is amazing setup because it's a really small CC, but it is frustrating. It is something nobody wants to beat, and it is a 1.4 second root on top of that initial knockup. So it's like the knockup into the root. Very strong item, uh, ability. Your three is the double leap, plus it's giving you protections. So your tank gear, you also have crazy mobility. Then you have a CC immune alt that is massive. It is a very frustrating and can hit anybody. It's very easy for you to hit this ultimate. It's not difficult. So, Shing Ten is number three because your laning phase is good. You have that one to throw on hunters. Your clear is pretty good because you can one the wave. You can almost always one the archers and the hunter to make sure your team is or your duo lane is winning that lane. You've got the annoying CC, you got the safety, you can jump in, throw some abilities out, jump out, a lot of different ways to play it, and then you have a massive vault. He's just so safe that your stats will always look better, whether the game is going one way or another. And that's something a lot of people like to see. But on top of that, the stats should really, like, that's obviously important to you. But the simplicity of the god should be the real thing you're focused on, right? It, it's in... CC is easy to land, big abilities, and you're out. In and out. Easy peasy. Blink is amazing on this god. Uh, you don't really need the double defensive actives by any means. Your CC immunity, so you can use that whenever you're being focused or you're, they're trying to CC you out of your ultimate. And then your leap is a really good mobility, so you don't need things to really stay alive. You're never going to need beads if they have any comps that are going to try to CC and kill you like they would, you know, a Kepri or someone like that. You're never going to need the horrific you can get in. So Blink and, and uh, Shell is all you're ever going to need for your team. And you're going to be able to do the, your whole job. Build, same build as the other two builds. Don't really need to talk about it too much. Either or on the starters. Once again, Benevolence or Sentinels. I say Sentinels for every person who's, you know, playing ranked in casuals and isn't really high ranked because you're still learning. Still going into the gauntlet, still going into the mana core spikes. All these items are good because all these gods have a lot of CC. Just overall, they have fairly good CC. Plus, on top of it, you're not worried about the passive on mana core spikes. You're worried about the fact that you're getting crazy, crazy good stats. Where's this item at? Crazy good stats on this item for 2200 gold. It, it's just ridiculous. Then you can go into the same defensive items. You can look at building emperors. You can look at building anti heal in this slot. Up to you. Now, the one thing I will say. Shing Ten is more of a, you know, jump in, do your thing, come back type of god. This would be a god where I'd maybe opt out of going the Gauntlet of Thebes, and I would look at going the Mail of Renewal. CDR is also really valuable on him, just so you know. But that Mail of Renewal, because you're being annoying, you're in the back line, you're diving in, that Mail Healing is going to be massive for you, and you're not really super peely super sit on my hunter and my mage and give them auras as as a god type like the god just doesn't end up playing like that with the play style so that's why male renewal is going to have a lot of value for you be able to heal your front line be able to heal yourself when you're in their jungle or just being super annoying wherever you are uh we still have same build same items i don't know why i can't find emperors because i'm blind uh you can go anti-heal here you go emperors here whichever it is you need really just completely up to you if you are going contagion in these builds instead of pestilence you're Physical defense peaks insanely high. So just remember that. <laughs> just remember your physical defense is nuts. So like this would be a full build. You're, you're easily capping that if you decide to go Contagion over Pestilence in these slots. If you're looking for another magical defensive item, can't really go wrong. You can go super selfish and you aren't hurting your team in a lot of ways. You can still grab a Pridwin here if you're looking for a little bit of CDR because you want to spam. If it's just the way the game is playing out for you. These are where you do what you want. This is where you grab the items that you want for yourself to do the things that you need to do. Um, if you're looking to be more aggressive, you have Genji's. Like I said, if you're looking to give your team buffs because your solo laner's not getting it, you have Shogun's. There's just a lot of items for you to look at grabbing. Shogun's in this slot, like we talked about. Genji's in this slot. Pretty uncommon to see a lot of Genji's in these slots, but it is a good item. It's a very good item. You can't go wrong. At that stage, you're almost looking at like solo laner type style play anyway. So the solo laner items becomes a lot stronger for you. 
So, Shing Ten, number three on our list. Now, number two. So there's two gods in this slot. Terra is the one I'm going to tell you to play. Why? Because she's simple. You put your three down, you dash, you dash, put your stun down, boom, you've done your whole kit. You've locked them down. You've sustained. As long as you alt in the team fight, you're you're doing more than a lot of other gods are in team fight situations as supports. So that's that. If you didn't know what the ultimate does, that's something you need to process. You heal your teammates at max rank for 30, 300, right? When it procs. So what happens is you buff everybody in the circle and you debuff everyone in the circle. The buff of your teammates. Once they get hit a couple times, you heal them for 300. Once the people that you debuff get hit a couple times, you do 400 damage. You also have a healing over time effect that gets procced, so it's going to buff your teammates even more. So it's a swing of damage and health. You heal your team for 300, you take away 400 damage, or you do 400 damage to the enemy team. That's a 700 health swing for everybody hit by the circle. Potentially 10 players, or 9 players, including yourself, 10 players. That's nuts. That is massive. That needs to be noted. She's getting played a lot more. She was getting played before, and then she got a buff. So that's why that's happening. And then we're in a different situation here with Terra. Terra is our only real healer god. So we're going to talk about it. You can go Sentinels or Benevolence and just stack the healing on top of the healing, top of the healing. I told you it could have a downside with if the enemy team is going to stack anti-heal. They should build anti-heal against you, but a lot of people don't. Because they don't respect Terra's healing. Even though Terra's healing is very, very good. We just talked about that ultimate being a 300 heal and a 400 damage swing. So a 700 total health swing. That's nuts. But you are a very safe god. It is hard to lock you down. You can't be plucked. You can't be knocked up as long as you have one of your pillars down. Your three or your two. So benevolence becomes very valuable for you in this slot. Because you don't need to be crazy tanky. You shouldn't be getting hit all that much. You can't be CC'd. It should be very hard to really kill you as a Terra. So that is something you have to note. I would still go Golan at Thebes here. I wouldn't stack Mill over Renewal. It just becomes kind of pointless. And if you are going to Benevolence, I've seen a lot of people messing around and going into Animosity for the health. And I guess because if you're autoing, you know, three or four times, it's a lot of extra damage. But realistically, you should be just looking at Compassion. It's going to make you crazy tanky against mages. And because you've kind of gone through that early stage where you're not stacking the defense, this is going to be a massive stack of defense. Um, I don't know why... It doesn't show when you build this item on the builder. I've never noticed that. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it doesn't show when you build compassion. See, uh, magical protections do not go up. So it should be 120. Should be a lot of tank. Is this working? Oh, yeah, your Garland of Thieves doesn't even show your protections either with stacks. That's crazy. It, it, hold on. Maybe I didn't do it evolved. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see the stats accurately. Yeah, you can't even... <laughs> you can't even show the evolve that's crazy all right well whatever so there's a lot of stats missing um especially in the other gods i was showing you you're still missing a, you're actually very much capped out uh once you're full build if you are hitting full build so now here's where things let's pretend we don't have this so we're a little squishy things get a lot different for you you're a god with healing in your kit so fey blessed becomes an optional item it's a 2200 gold item with 60 magical protections, 350 HP, 40 MP5. You never go um and 10% cooldown. On top of that, anytime you heal, you drop a flower. That heal then gives their teammates a shield. This item is nuts. Not even because of the passive. Just like mana cores. This item is insane for the stats. And when you pair it with your next item. If I can find it. Mana core. 4,400 gold. For a ridiculous amount of stats. You're talking uh, 100 magical protections, 40 physical protections, 700 HP. You're at 3,600 HP with just really three items at this stage. If you opt to go for a tankier build here and you don't go the Benevolence, you go Sentinels. You're even tankier. And then when we're talking about upgrading that Sentinels, we're talking about a full level 17 Sentinels Embrace. These stats are unreal. Then when you want to go into more physical at this stage, you've got options. If your team is super W king and you want to get selfish, this will be the only real god that I'd say to do this. Maybe, maybe, maybe the number one god. But Breastplate of Valor will give you cooldown and a lot of physical defense that you're missing. On top of that, your spam at this level, you're never going home. You can do whatever you want. See if I can be 45 minutes long. You're never going home because you have so much sustain. 
in reality, you're probably going to end up going a Contagion here because almost every team has healing and you want anti-heal, so that's an option. You can look at building damage on a god like Terra because you have that ultimate. A little bit less rare or more rare, so we're not going to get into that. I'm not going to tell you to build damage. If you do at that stage want to go damage, go like a Soul Reaver or something that'll just add on to what you're already capable of doing. Um... But yeah, like I said, physical defense in this slot is what you want, and you've got options. Whatever really just is comfortable for you is an option. Um, you are very, very tanky. I would probably end up going Emperor's Armor Contagion here every time. Uh, we'll go the Emperor's, pretending they don't have any healing, and then you'll end out the build with either a Spirit Robe or Mental Discord, your choice. So, a little bit lower, on, lower, I say lower on the defense. You're really not that low on the defense end. You're still insanely, insanely tanky. You have 4,100 HP. You're able to spam. Even without cooldown on this god, you're able to spam very, very easily. So just realize that. You don't need cooldown. Your abilities have lower cooldowns in general. Your, your dash does, really. They, they nerfed it down. But 15 seconds on these abilities is not too bad because you're kind of playing it slow anyway. You're throwing that 3 out, then you're dashing once, and then you're autoing, and you're dashing again. So you get like 3-4 seconds in there before you're even done with the ability. You throw your 2 out, you're autoing them down, you're comboing. A lot of the time you're just playing around your own setup anyway. So Terra just kind of does her thing without a lot of cooldown. Cooldown is pretty fun to play though. So you can throw that in the build if you're feeling it. So that's Terra number 2. I said there was a second god, Yamoja. Similar situation. Pretty much the exact same situation. Emoji's going to build the same, play the same. The reason, it's like an or for me. Terra, very easy to play, hard to mess up. Easy to do your job, very, very strong. Yamoja, very strong. One of the strongest. One of the most annoying gods in the game. But very few people, especially lower rated people, play Yamoja correctly. That's simple. They just do not play Yamoja properly. They don't want to frontline because they're a ranged god. They can't process that. They're very inconsistent with their one. They never use their three to set up or to lock people in. And then the biggest thing is you have an ultimate that is on a 140 second cooldown, right? 102 over two minutes. If you don't use this right, if you don't lock people in against the wall every time, you will not have any value in the team fights your your team fight value is gone and if it's on a two and a half minute almost cooldown and you miss one in a 25 minute game and that's assuming you're ulting every two and a half minutes you're not getting that many ults off in a match they need to count so i do not recommend playing emoja a lot definitely not in ranked if you haven't put in a lot of practice on her that's why i have her as like a, a, a or Almost like a skill level. Almost like if you are really, really good and comfortable and confident with your Yamoja, she's number two. If you're not, just drop her out of the top five. Don't even look at her. Just don't even touch her. It's not even worth it. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna. That, that's where we're gonna leave that. Number one on the list is Atlas. It's just the most straightforward thing. He's a hyper annoying god where you can continuously W key. You can get your teammates into fights with the extra movement from the three. You create so much chaos and havoc in team fights with your ones going off, your twos going off, your dashes, your ultimate being in the middle of the team fight, shredding protections and doing everything it's doing. His value is unmatched. And then on top of that, every single time he hits a pull, right? Every time he pulls you and picks you up, he's close, he grabs you, throws it, takes you in there. That's three to four autos on you from the enemy hunter or whoever's around. And you are crazy out of position once he tosses you backwards. It's one of the best displacement abilities because he's so hard to kill in general and because his, so kit, his whole kit is so annoying. And then on top of that, you can just be thrown back to the enemy, just, just thrown to the wolves. That is why he is number one. He is easy to play. His lane clear is super simple. You throw the one out, pull auto, 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 which is actually just pulsing that one. You clear the wave. Run at them, pick them up with the two, throw them back. Boom. You've done your job. Then... <laughs> You decide whether you want to chase with the three or run away with the three. It gives your teammates movement speed. It does a lot of damage. This god does, over the course of a game, he should do more damage than any other support could potentially do unless the other dude is just having a way better game than you. That is why Atlas is sitting at this number one slot. 
Builds are the same. He doesn't have healing, so you don't need to worry about Fae Blessed. You're just going the normal builds. I would go cooldown on him. His cooldowns are a little bit longer. Once you level the one up, it gets down to 10 seconds, but it's starting at 14 seconds. Two is on a 16 second cooldown. Your three, I think, is also on 16 seconds. Yep. And then your ultimate is on a 90 second cooldown. So throwing CDR into his build is going to be really valuable. You could look at the Sentinels. You're going to be in their face a lot. So Sentinels are going to be super valuable here. So you're tankier and you're just not falling over. If you're playing selfish and frontline or planning to play frontline the whole game and less peely, Mail of Renewal over the Gauntlet will be super valuable here too. Plus you're extra tanky at that stage in the game. You aren't looking at the stacks. You're kind of just running around being annoying, which is what Atlas does well. He rotates to every lane, plays as if he's a jungler, and just is annoying 24-7. Just be as annoying as possible. Then we're going to the Mana Cores. Then we want to go cooldown. Cooldown is going to be super up to you. I like to play selfish and go like a breastplate. Realistically, it just works out for me. If you aren't looking to be too selfish, you could go the Pridwin if you're going to be spamming your ult. That's also going to be kind of valuable. You're just losing a lot of protections. So completely up to you. This is 20% at that stage, which is nice. Then we're looking at, I'm just going to throw in the Contagion here for anti-heal because you will be frontlining onto some hunters and being as annoying. This item can be anything, by the way. If they're stacking crit, this item could be a spectral armor. If they're just a lot of auto attack gods, or they're not building crit, you can go mid guardian. You go any physical item in this slot, or if they're heavy magical, any magical defense item in the slot, completely up to you. You do what you want to do. Then we're going into the, if I can find it, mantle. Boom. Full build all day long. Atlas is untouchable. I think he is the craziest support we've seen. He is always annoying. It does not take a lot of skill to be annoying, which is what you want to be as a support. You want to be annoying. Just a lot of people aren't good enough to do it. This god will do it for you. All you have to do is hit your abilities. And they're very, very easy to hit. So, that's our top five supports. I know you guys have been asking for it. It's a little bit long. It's a longer one because I want people to understand. Support is an important role right now. And it's a strong role. And it's only getting stronger in the next patch. So, be ready for that. Hope you guys like the video. The like button. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you in the video later tomorrow. The next day. The next day.